uh, before we start, I just wanted to give you some review on uh, the multivariate Gaussian function, right? Uh, suppose that if I have a random vector x having the x as a random variable here, x1, x2, x1 up to the same. So this is the random vector, which is of size n plus 1. And uh, Yeah. Yes, sir. So these are all the individual. So they are all the random variable here. X one, X two, X three, and so on. But this is X n. They are all the random variable, right? So if I want to density function, for, which is multivariate Gaussian density function, individually they are Gaussian. X one, X two, X three, and so on. They are all Gaussian, right? So which is actually given by one by two pi power n by 2, n is the number of <laughs> this covariance matrix C x power of x minus mu x. It is a random vector me right? Basically, column vector and then we have this cx inverse x. so this is this is what we call it as the density function for the run right so if i have more than one elements so it multivariate gaussian function which is actually described by two important parameter one is the cx comb is this mean vector mu x basically what is that cx cx is basically expectation of xx transpose mu x mu x transpose right so it is like that this actually can also be written i mean it actually starts from this only x minus mu x right into x minus x by expanding this, you get like this, right? So, this is what we call it as covariance matrix. And uh, your mean vector mu x is nothing but expectation of x. Mu x basically, if I see that mu x is basically is a vector, mu x is a vector actually, it's a mean vector. Each element is going to be like that, you know, right? And this is yeah right so it transpose yeah so because well, these are in that exponential term that should be the scalar form so this should be one cross n and this will cross n. n cross 1 so that this is becoming scalar and print is actually scalar here and density like this we will cross check that one by choosing this n equal to 1 also so the expectation of this is expectation of x2 the elements right so in the elements we are taking this expectation that is the meaning of this mu x vector right so this is this is what this mu x. And what is that elements in that covariance matrix, basically? Covariance matrix, so you are having this, you know, the 1 comma 1 element is basically x1 square minus, I mean, expectation of x1 into expectation of x1. So, Comma one element. If I want to know about this covariance matrix, right? So like that, if I this 
this element this is the off diagonal right so it is going to be expectation of x1 x2 minus x of x2 it is like that right so that so you keep on uh, matrix in fact I, i'll write few more elements so this to be your expectation of x2 x1 and of x2 into expectation of x1 so in fact these two are same this okay, right it is uh, it is basically the symmetric matrix here right so these two are going to be the same here right so if i talk about this element so this is going to be your expectation of x2 square minus expectation of x the whole square so it is like that it goes all the way like this right so what i want and all is giving you the variance this is sigma x1 square it is a variance of this first element x1 here and this one you get sigma x2 square so the diagonal elements are the variance and the off diagonal elements is the correlation right it is a cross correlation between the two variable here x1 and x2 right so how far they are correlated with each other so that is that information you are getting here this is the measurement of correlation right suppose that if x1 and x2 are uncorrelated this value is actually becoming zero is actually becoming zero we can say that when cx is diagonal when cx right we say what we have considered here right this x1 x2 and so on they are said so to be what un uncorrelated right so if it is uncorrelated at this cx to be the diagonal cx is going to be the diagonal right so independent is different uncorrelated is different so don't get confused that independent random area uncorrelated is different right if i want to say that the random variable x1 and x2 they are independent then it actually deals with the joint density function right so if i have the joint density function if i am able to write this one as the product of this marginal density function then we can say that it is independent right uncorrelated means it has to satisfy this right expectation of x1 x2 minus expectation of x1 into expectation of x2 that value is going to be that zero right so we cannot say it granted that independent and uncorrelated are identical but one special property if it is gaussian distributed only for this case when it is gaussian distributed when x1 x2 x3 they are all gaussian distributed if i say that it is independent it is uncorrelated if it is uncorrelated it is independent only the case when it is gaussian right not in general in general it is not we cannot say anything on that but when it is gaussian we can say if it is independent it is uncorrelated the other way is also true so this uh, fact is important because that is what we are going to discuss today with this uh, things right so let me um, consider n equal to 1 to have a cross check of uh, what is the density function you are getting because you are all familiar with 1d 1d gaussian i am mean, having only one element that you know so suppose that if i put this n equal to 1 in this expression so this is becoming what 2 pi power 1 by 2 which is actually square root of 2 pi and your covariance matrix is only one element that is going to be that variance here so it is going to be your again you are having this power of it is coming under square root sigma x1 square e power minus half and having only one element so it is going to be x1 minus mu x1 cx is a sigma square so that is coming the is a scalar so i can put it here sigma square here 
and this is x minus mu x again it is coming right is a scalar so i can put it as square here so this is the familiar 1d gaussian density function right for n equal to 1 it boils down to this right so we have this right so this boils down to this right so this fact is needed to understand today's topic to understand today's topic fact this uh, property of immediate gas needed so now we will go for the actual uh, discussion on this uh, regression using this uh, base technique right so quick review of what we discussed in the previous class right so as usual we will have a quick uh, recollect of the model w transpose phi of x that is a model here plus epsilon as you know and uh, we have the training data like x1 x2 right so these are all the things uh, given to you right xn and then tn are given the requirement is to identify what is this w and your epsilon is going to be that gaussian density function right it's a random variable with uh, mean zero and uh, variance is going to be one by beta right so you need to estimate w so that is the goal right so we have what is called i'm going little fast because these things we already discussed this f of w is what we call this is prior prior density function because we are interested in estimating this w only right so this is that prior here and uh, we have this f of w given t which is the posterior posterior density function density function and we have this f of t given w so that is what we call this likelihood function right this is the likelihood function we have here <coughs> in uh, so if this epsilon is gaussian with mean zero and one variance as one by beta right so we know that um, your maximum likelihood estimation ml maximum likelihood estimation ends up with right the least square solution which is least square basically the least square solution in which the estimate w cap is obtained as phi transpose phi the whole inverse phi transpose t which is known to you in maximum likelihood and least square solution both are ending up with the same provided the noise what we are considering here is gaussian if it is different noise then the solution what we get is going to be the different right so the idea is we likelihood estimation just by using the Bayes rule, right? So we represented this uh, f of w given t as uh, f of t given w, f of w whole divided by f of t. This is what we used, right? and uh, we actually gone for i mean once you know this f of w given t which is basically the posterior density function if i know that then i can go for three distinct solution one is this conditional mean and conditional mode and then we have this conditional median right we have these things and in fact conditional mode is always map we know that it is nothing but maximizing this f of w given t this is what you you are trying to maximize here right so the, we already know so unfortunately this is not model w given t is not model but we model this f of t given w in case of uh, parametric approach right which is which we know that it is going to be that gaussian we already know that so in that case, the denominator part is not playing any role in maximizing this term, right? The numerator only is playing the role in that you have f of w also is available. In case of uh, this uh, likelihood estimation, right, we are assuming that this f of w is 
basically the uniform distribution your it's constant right so uniform distribution right so that that it is uh, the maximum estimation right which we know but today what we are going to discuss here is you are instead of choosing this f of w as uniform suppose this is important what i am going to tell now is very important suppose that f of w is assumed as gaussian distributed f of w is also assumed as gaussian distributed with this mean vector as n not and your covariance matrix is s not now you are comfortable with what is mean by this covariance matrix right so that is the reason i gave the introduction about this uh, multivariate gaussian density function right so you know size for this w what is a w w is having the elements all the way from w not and you have this w1 and so on up to this what wm minus 1 so which we already know the m based function and the size of this w is going to be one so it is a partial density function that what now we are assuming it is a multivariate gaussian density function this is multivariate gaussian now if it is a multivariate gaussian density function that needs to be explained or expressed using its mean vector and the covariance matrix that is what now arbitrarily chosen the covariance matrix s not and m not if that is the case then i am looking for this because we are this is what because f of w given t without any proof i am just saying that f of w given t it can be shown i i can share the notes for this but that is out of uh, scope as far as this course is considered but it can be easily shown that f of w given t that is also going to be that gaussian chat and the and mobile ngini now is that all right now all right am i audible okay right so it of w given t right that is also that is also gaussian but which is you know, if it is gaussian then that needs to be described matrix i am calling this mean vector as mn and the covariance matrix as sn right i am calling like that so so it is like that you know so this is that mean vector and this is the covariance matrix for f of w and f of w given this is the mean vector and this is the covariance matrix they are related they are related because you know the model for t using this model they are interrelated so mn is related like this mn is given as sn into s not inverse m not beta times phi transpose t right and yes inverse or sn we'll put it as sn sn is s not inverse plus beta times phi transpose phi this one we put it as what the whole inverse it is like that see i i put it as uh, in a simple word like if if f of w is assumed as gaussian with mean vector not and s not then this post density function f of w given t that also follows gaussian with mean vector mn and covariance matrix sn and they are related you see that mn is related to s not and m not here where sn is given in this expression like this right so for instant i mean this is more general expression what we actually got so let us assume again to narrow down m not we'll assume that it is zero vector so m not is that you know 
mean vector for f of w which is in your control which is in your control right so because that is that is a model what you are creating because you are imposing the what is the value of w you are going to fix you are you are going to fix the value of w you are having some control over it you are taking that control so i can even control to <coughs> to be more you know vector to be zero and yes not to be like you know the elements of this w right are treated as uncorrelated and of course as far as uh, gaussian data is considered uncorrelated and and uh, independent both are going to be the same that i am going to call it as one by alpha i you have to be careful what i am writing yes not is the matrix what i am trying to say here is the diagonal elements of the diagonal elements of this s not are going to be that 1 by alpha and the, these things are going to be zero it means that what the assumption is so this w not w1 and so on up to this wm minus 1 they are uncorrelated as it is a gaussian uncorrelated and independent or the same so i will let me put it as independent also right so they are they are uncorrelated and independent and hence your s not is going to be the diagonal matrix and this can be written in short like 1 by alpha i i am writing this one purposefully to look for what is that value you are going to get for in this mn so let us see this what is the value you are getting this this one mn right so this mn as is m not is zero right so this term is going to be zero now right so in place of sn i this and you know that s not is 1 by alpha i right so i need to take that inverse so you get this alpha here plus beta times phi transpose phi the whole inverse i am writing this sn here sn is this and s not is 1 by alpha i right so that i am writing here so alpha i plus beta times phi transpose phi the whole inverse this beta is coming into picture here and then this is phi transpose t so if i take this beta common in this expression this is important what i am writing now is uh, important to interpret what is that base right so you are getting this mn as if i take this beta outside because if i take beta outside you get beta inverse beta inverse beta will get cancel so you get Phi transpose phi. I'm writing that second term first, and this term, this term is you get alpha by beta i, the whole inverse phi transpose t. It's very interesting to see this because this result is looking like the regularization result where we use lambda phi transpose phi plus lambda i, the whole inverse. phi transpose t this is the regularization model we know that right for estimating this w we use this regularization constant right so now this is what we use right it's so a w cap this is what we call this regularization now bayes rule act is actually ending up with the regularization that is what i the important information the regularization right so it is like this right for some values of alpha and beta right here we are having this in place of lambda in place of lambda we have what is called alpha by beta when is alpha by beta right you know what is alpha and what is beta 1 by alpha is the variance of the vector w the elements of this vector w right so that's a variance 1 by beta variance of the noise added noise right so this is related with epsilon <coughs> sorry so if this 1 by alpha beta if it is known but it is not really known in reality right so but what we interpret is like this when lambda is equal to alpha by beta 
So your regularization technique, the base technique. This is the important point what actually you are supposed to get. This is the base technique here. So the regularization technique becomes with the following things, right? One is one is your W not Gaussian is assumed as Gaussian with zero and variance is one by alpha i covariance matrix right so this regular right is actually same as that of your base technique with the lambda is equal to what alpha by beta. so that is a way how we can interpret this base technique right so when you are doing regularization technique you are indirectly actually doing the base technique because you are exploring the value for lambda for which it is fitting properly as you know the methodology how to fix this lambda right so it is a it is a control parameter what we are having regularization is there right so indirectly you are trying to explore the various combinations of alpha by beta so instead of having tuning both alpha and beta because we don't know the value of alpha and beta so we are combining this as a lambda here so regularization technique we can interpret is a base technique and that is the reason regularization technique is the best we, because we know as far as the statistical way of estimating this w is considered we have to actually go for this base technique right so we have to go for the posterior density function right and then we have to go for the conditional mean or conditional median and conditional mode in all the case as this f of w given t this is Gaussian distributed, all the three are going to end up with the same result and uh, that result is your MN. So in other words, this base estimate of uh, W, W cap is going to be your MN and that is given as phi transpose phi I the whole inverse phi transpose you will see one illustration on this then you can understand still more better right i will share something else now So this is what we are uh, discussing, right? So this is the final step what we got, right? So the regularized least square solution with lambda is equal to alpha by beta. That is what uh, the thing, right? Now what you are going to see now, this is the important thing, what you are seeing here. I will explain you what is this basically. What you see in the left hand side is the prior density function. So you have a random vector w having only two elements w0 and w1 right and uh, the variance for this w0 and w1 they are going to be the same. <coughs> if it is different then you get in a ellipse I mean, shape here, here it is circular here, right? So what is this? This is basically the contours of the density function. This is the contours of contours of the density function, right? So now there is no training data, no training data now, right? There is no no training data. No data is available now. No training data. But what I am going to, what is the requirement is, right? I, I just wanted to fit a state line. Fitting the state line with 
two elements right i mean the variables w0 and w1 right so this is this is like you know y of x is equal to what w transpose phi of x the same expression only right so now if i expand it w0 phi not of x plus w1 phi1 of x right and in this example x is your phi1 of x is x itself and phi0 of x is 1 right so and hence you are getting w0 plus w1 into x so that is the expression y of x so it is like putting the straight line right so y of x is w0 plus w1 into x i need to fit right so now we are going to pick the value of w0 basket this one we can say that it is a basket this is a basket now so i am just trying to get the value of this w0 right this is like that so you have this is going to be that larger because it is the bell shape 2d bell shape actually so you can imagine that the density function is going to be a 2d bell shape like this so and this is the contour right contour means having the same density functional value right so however you is having the same density functional value that is the meaning of this contour right here so the value is going to be maximum in the middle this value is here as it goes this way the values are going to decrease and in fact as it reaches this edge the values are going to be zero this is almost zero right so value is going to be around this region so wherever you see this brown red yellow the values are gradually decreasing and then ending up with zero it is like that the density function right so you are going to pick up this value of this uh, w vector right so this is the w vector you are going to pick as i told you this is the basket me right so because i don't have training data as of now so slowly i am going to introduce the training data as of now there is no training data so i can pick just like that with this basket any value i can pick but the probability of picking the value in this region is going to be larger because that density is larger so equivalently that you know that particular value i can pick more number of times so but i can pick any any point here but the probability will be different this is a basket and i can pick so if i am picking one particular value for example if i am picking some something like this you are freezing this value of this w w1 so i can get a expression y equal to because you already know what the value becomes linear equation w1x this is a just a straight line equation is coming so maybe you know let me say that this is a straight line corresponds to that this is the straight line corresponds to that so if i am picking some other value i get another straight line so it is like that so maybe another straight line i get so by picking different values here here and there right so i get different straight lines here but what is the catch here the catch here is your post trade density function is now going to change based on the data what you are going to have now what is happening here is you are going to have a training data this is the training data given to you training data is there right so you see that in the left hand side what is this is prior and posterior density function the first column right that the post trade density function is a, we have what is called this likelihood function into the prior of course we have the denominator f of t is also there that is normalized right so basically we wanted to we have to multiply this prior and the likelihood function to get the post trade density function right so given the data this is being 
you can see that how the post density function is getting or down right how function is getting narrowed down you see that the post state density function in this case based on the number of data right right see here only one data we are having now you need to pick from where you have to pick this is the this is the place where you so this is the post state density function now after introducing this training data your post state density function now it is getting changed just by multiplying this likelihood function right so you have a likelihood function in this right and this likelihood function is getting multiplied with what it is getting multiplied with your right and you get this post state density function this post state density function with only one training data now i am going to the probability now picking in this region is very minimal so i will not pick anything from here whatever i am marking here so this regions i will not choose for picking the value for this w so i i actually go for the region which is having that the largest uh, what is that you know the probability density functional value right so so i can pick here this you can pick like this right so if i pick each for me i can pick different values of uh, w0 and w1 for every w0 and w1 i get the straight lines so i am getting different state and here right so, so compared to the previous this is totally without any training data i am getting a different state lines here but when it comes to this region is somewhat better right so now by introducing one more one more data right so you are having two training data now for the second training data this is the likelihood function this is the function data right f of uh, t1 given w so first data likelihood function so this is the likelihood function for the is t2 given w right so now what is happening the test post state density function is getting multiplied with the likelihood function to get the post let this is the post density function we are getting so now the state is getting near down right so the probability that you pick this w0 and w1 from this region so that is going to be zero so you are not going to pick from here means that that probability is very less right here so you are going to pick the values around this region so depends upon what you pick here we get different state lines here so with the two data the these are all the possible state lines what actually you the model linear regression is and now Well, keep on doing that. Like this is the last data. Maybe twenty uh, data. If I'm using this, is the likelihood function corresponding to the twentieth data. F of t twenty, and uh, the latest uh, post state density function is getting multiplied with this likelihood function to get that final post state density function here. Post state density function. the narrow down right so it is narrow down here and uh, whatever the values you pick here right you get different uh, state lines in this right so now the state lines are right to each other this is what actually you achieve using this so this experiment is actually done with uh, right this value of alpha as 2 and beta as right so now you you know what is alpha and beta i repeat what is alpha and beta because what is going to be the noisy observation right 
So as I told you, this Y, right, the training data, whatever the training data you are having, so these are all the noisy, noisy training data, which is basically not just Y of X, Y of X plus Epsilon, right? And Epsilon follows Gaussian density function with mean zero and variance is one by beta. And that beta is what is given here, the beta okay. So what we be actually used here for generating this noise? So whatever we observe, the training data is like this. And you have here the original density function here for W, right? So that is going to have the covariance matrix S0 that is going to be one by alpha I, right? And that alpha is given by two. So it depends upon what value you are choosing, you get different variance, how fast it is dying, right? So how fast it is moving towards zero, right? So th that is what your alpha, one by alpha I is going to be that variance actually. So it is one by two. So one by two is 0.5 I, I here, right? So I didn't, I is the identity matrix here, right? So that is a variance, how fast it is uh, going down and how it is reaching that zero value, right? So it depends upon the value, whether it is going to go slowly or fast, right? So that will be decided by this alpha. So this alpha and beta determines this whole experiment. So experiment is done like so the data collection, whatever we are having here. So that is the noisy data. So that in the noisy outcome, which is actually coming from the Gaussian with, with that is one thing. And you are working on density here. So that is going to have that variance is 0.5, right? So you, you are keep on multiplying this prior density function with the likelihood function at the posterior. That's what, no? So this is prior, this is likelihood, and you are getting this posterior. And this is f of t in the denominator is actually not explicitly done because if you have to make it as a normalized because you know that the area under the curve of this f of w given t that should be end up with one. That's it. If I multiply and if I make it as a normalization, you get this f of w given t. That is what actually it is done, right? So f of t is explicitly not found, right? It is just f of w into f of t given w, and then you simply do the normalization. Like that only it is done here. So this is the likelihood function, and you have a prior density function, both getting multiplied and do the normalization. And this prior post density function, you are going to multiply the second likelihood function, and then to do the normalization, you get a post density function, the latest one. We keep on doing that one for uh, many data set here. So this is around 20, I think. Yeah, around 20, right? So so after that, you get actually the post density function is very narrow. Down. So now the regression problem, how you have to view the regression problem is not simple, you know, simply saying one particular W0 and W1. We should not say that it is just W0 and W1. Instead, right, and say that the whole post density function, whatever we are having here, right? So anything you pick from this post density function, right? So that is going to be that solution for this regression model. If at all, if you want to freeze one value, you have to go for the mean, conditional mean, conditional mode, or conditional median function. And that is going to be that final filter, right? But anything from this region, right? It is fine. So you can see that whatever the state line you are you have chosen, all are going to be that proper fit only for the data, right? So if if you want really to freeze one, then you have to freeze the mean, right? So Region convergence to that single point. I mean, this one you are telling? This one? Yeah. So, see, you, you multiply, see, that is what that idea is. That is what our requirement is. So, that is what the, after, yeah, after multiple, not multiple iteration, 
after hydration the sense not uh, in not in that context after applying for different uh, data point right so after applying 20 data point it becomes narrowed down in this case it is 20 data point 20 data point if we keep on applying this it is just a matrix multiplication you can view this as a matrix multiplication right see this is the image you can say so in terms of uh, uh, mathematical way of understanding this one is this is the image and you have a value of for this you have for every pixel you have some value for it every pixel you have the value right so what you are going to do is first of all this you have value right so every point you are going to have some value because we have different colors in it so in the matrix you are going to have different values in it right so and that is getting multiplied with every one to one element of this likelihood function we are going to have this uh, likelihood function like this right and if i multiply these two this one you with this you get a new matrix and if i plot that as a image you get like this just with only one data it is actually Gaussian again it is Gaussian anywhere anyhow it is going to be Gaussian right and uh, Gaussian means either circular or ellipse it will come so here it is ellipse it will be ellipse it is coming the contours are right so this one again this matrix this matrix you are going to multiply with the next function for the second data if I do that again it is ellipse if you closely see that so the contours are ellipse. This is again Gaussian. Gaussian density function is Gaussian, but it is getting narrowed down. That is the interesting point, right? So just with the two data itself, it is almost narrowed down. But still, you are not happy with the various fitting lines, right? With this data, you are having possible lines available, right? These are all the possible regression lines obtained using this, right? I have one more. I mean, this is not one I mean, many data right now. So actually, you need to do one by one. The intermediate I skipped. I didn't have the plot, right? So we need to continue this. We need to continue for T three. We need to continue for T four. We need to continue for like that one by one. You have to put the data. So after twenty data, right? If I keep on doing this job again and again, so after twenty data, if I do this multiplication, it, again Gaussian. This is ellipse only, right? But but what is happening? It is dying. Very so I mean, the value is becoming zero very fast. It is like that, and it is narrowing down, right? So whatever the value you choose from this region, not on W1, that is going to have the maximum probability. So so that's what I said. This is the basket. You are going to pick this value for this W not on W1 based on the density function. So when the probability is larger, you actually pick more from this. You 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 will not pick pick from this region so when you pick mostly from this region right so whatever is available here inside right so those w0 and w1 only you are going to choose like this you know so for every combinations of this w0 w1 we get various state lines here so these are all the different regression state lines what we get so this is just to demonstrate uh, how this uh, base happening right so let me stop here. Once again, we will discuss this one in detail in the next class with another illustration. Before that, I just wanted to give you a talk. It's very simple, but you think about it. Why the likelihood function for this particular problem, this state line, right? You know the expression for the likelihood function. You know it because you know the model is very simple, right? T is what? T is y of x. That's epsilon. That is a model, right? So now in this case, you are. What is that? O of x model. That also you know, right? W naught plus W one x. That is also known to you. I have given you enough clue, right? So this is the model, right? So this is t is equal to W naught plus W one x plus epsilon, right? I I wanted you to find out. For one particular data, right? Say, for example, you are 
you have a data x1 and then corresponding t1 right so you can fix some x1 and then observation as t1 t1 is going to be the noisy one right so i would like to write you to find out what is the density function of t1 given a particular right w0 and w1 how it looks like right in other words why this graph should look like this is very simple here itself we have a straight line in this but you think about it and tell me right you can put it in piazza also next class we will discuss anyhow this one why should it like this right so if you know that so this is very obvious very simple because we assume that w is gaussian so it is going to be like this and uh, and you are going to have this variance also to be the same in circular shape and because of this likelihood function only the post density function is keep on changing think about it we'll discuss that one in the next class we'll stop here